Hello and welcome to our Particles for Plus tutorial video. I'm Lois from Connected Clean Rooms and Clean Room Shop. In our last video I showed you how to put the battery in your new particle counter and in this video I'll show you through how to set up your particle counter ready for your first sample counts. Press the power button down to power up and you'll be taken through to the home screen. There's a nifty stylus here held in the handle which helps improve accuracy when using the touchscreen. Importantly you need to set your, your date and time. This will mean that the time and date stamp will be correct on any readings you take. Just tap on the date and time field and you are taken to the setup screen. You can change the date format to whichever one feels most intuitive to you. Likewise, you can select the time field to be displayed in a 12 hour or 24 hour format. Once you've made the selections you need, click back to return to the home screen. You can see the battery icon in the top right hand corner which indicates the battery life. When you plug into power, this changes to a plug to indicate the change in power source. You may have noticed that the screen became brighter then. This is because you can vary settings depending on whether you're running off battery or power to control battery consumption. I'll show you how. If you click on the power icon, you are taken to the power management screen. Select on battery to vary the setup options when the unit is powered by the battery. If you set the brightness level to low, the battery life extends. The unit indicates the estimated battery time remaining and these figures will vary depending on the settings you've selected so you can see the impact of how much power you will save. This is really useful to check if the settings you've selected are appropriate for the amount of testing you need to do. Let's tap back to go to the home screen. Tapping on the Particles Plus logo takes you through to an information screen that gives you information on the manufacturer, the model number, the serial number, the calibration date, and the calibration due date. It also gives the number of channels from the particle counter, this one is a six, and some more information on the software. The particle sizes the unit will measure are shown on the home screen. This is a six channel unit, so there are six rows here, ranging from 0.3 micron to 10 micron. These are shown in the first column. Particle counters display readings in two columns, differential and cumulative. The second column with the delta heading shows a differential total which is the number of particles which are at least that size in diameter and up to but not including the next size. The third column with the sigma heading shows the cumulative total which is the amount of particles that were found at that size and greater. It is the cumulative column which the ISO standard relates to. The icon on the far right at the bottom of the home screen indicates how you are viewing the particle count data. This symbol here indicates that you will view the raw data as the actual particle counts taken. If I press this now, it will change to cubic feet and it will extrapolate at real time. You'll notice that the delta and sigma columns have also changed to indicate this choice. During counts, you may notice particle counts reducing in the volumetric mode, and this is due to changing projections at the sample rate changes. Tap this again, and you will see it changes to a cubic metre. The ISO standard relates to a cubic metre, and so this is the setting that we would use for ISO validation. It's quick to change, and as cubic feet and metres are extrapolated from raw data using set conversion factors, this can be changed before, after, or even during counts. From the home screen, if you tap on settings, you can change the channel size and turn channels on and off. You can't edit the first one, as that is fixed to 0.3, but you can change the other sizes of the other five channels. The range is from 0.3 to 10, and we'd recommend using channel sizes that are aligned with the ISO standard. In the enable alarm column, you can select if you would like the unit to trigger an alarm if counts are hitting a threshold, which you can set in the threshold column. This is great for continuous monitoring. 
there is a visible and audible alarm, the count numbers on the home screen will turn red and also the audible alarm will sound. You can select the unit which the threshold is set at, so we would select cumulative cubic metre to be in line with the ISO standard. Back to the home screen. And this is where you can change the volume. From the home screen, if you select the location drop down, you will see 10 locations listed. If you need to add a location, select New. which brings up a keyboard allowing you to name it. Select OK to save. If you need to edit the name of a location, highlight it and click Edit. To change the order of locations, highlight the location and use the arrow keys to move it up and down. You're all set now. Thanks very much for watching and look out for my next video where I'll take the unit into a clean room and start to take sample counts.